going everybody out on YouTube or on the internet you know it is D-Man the Greaser and well as you can see the title of this video I'm gonna talk about rockabilly like guitar tips and so I just watched the video of Outlaw Greaser, Outlaw Greaser go check him out he's great he's a great guy you know he talks about the Greaser lifestyle as well you know if you want to find some good videos of like things things of how to be like, or or good tips on being in the Greaser lifestyle, go check out Outlaw. Uh, great, great dude, you know, if you want to talk to him through Instagram, he is always there, you know, like for good tips on how to do the Greaser lifestyle, and yeah. So I'm giving you a little shout out, Outlaw. Uh, so I just watched the Outlaw Outlaw's video of like some different Rockabilly guitar um, tips, you know, like the Rockabilly guitar tips, whatever. And I thought he did a, a fantastic job of explaining it. And I just thought, you know what? I want to go explain like some different, different things of like how you can play guitar or not how to play guitar, but how you could do how, or how you can have that like rockabilly sound. You know, something that you would see like Chet Atkins, you know, Dwayne, Dwayne Eddy, you know, Brian Setzer, you know, all these different like rockabilly artists, you know, of how they get their sound. And I thought it'd be kind of fun to like kind of talk talk about and dive down into like of how they get their sound and you know and how you get that sound as well. So yeah, let's get into this video. Now, when it comes to the rockabilly guitars, you know, for a lot of young young cats out there who are learning how to play guitar and want to get into like the whole rockabilly thing, you know, the guitars I would tend to stay away from are like you know like the BC Riches. Um, you know, a lot of your Ibanez, like, you know, the, you know, those Ibanez, like, heavy metal guitars, I can't tell you the names of them, but you know what I'm talking about. You know, like, like, the style that, like, Steve Vai or, you know, Eddie Van Halen plays, you know, those kind of guitars, you know, I tend to stay away from them. Now, when it comes to Flying Bees, you know, like the Gibson Flying Bees, you know, you know, they're a little iffy. I say they're more on the blues side of things, but, you know, again, you know, you don't want to go through, you don't want to get, get those like, get like the typical guitars for like heavy metal, you know, you know, they have the, like the Floyd or what do you call them? Yeah, the, uh, the Floyd Rose bridges, what do you want to call them? Yeah, the Floyd Rose guitars, you know, yeah. You, you, you get the whole point. Um, the kind of guitars that I would typically recommend Getting if you're like into the whole rockabilly scene or into the whole rockabilly guitar playing, you know, you can always go for like a typical acoustic guitar, um, something that has a really good bright sounding, you know, you know, they're they're typically pretty good for you know playing some rhythm like some funk chords, you know, you can go from like just playing E to A, you know, something like. acoustic guitar that you know does have that nice bright tones you know this one's an epiphone so you know you're gonna find something pretty good with epiphone you know there's Gibson's some Martin Stew um, guilds are pretty good and yeah so that that's for your like acoustics and what's another kind of guitar you know that's very common with rockabilly and really known for rockabilly are your hollow bodies, you know, your holly, hollow body electrics. Now, I'm not going to plug this one in because, you know, a lot of people in my family, they're kind of asleep right now. Um, you know, you know, my mom's with a client, whatever, and yeah, you know, they don't want me to play, play my electric at this, at this time, but I'll probably play it like maybe sometime at the end of the video, you know, who knows? Anyway, um, or I'll pull up an old video of me playing like an electric like with rockabilly yeah anyway 
you know, going back to the hollow bodies, you know, they're very well known for like playing electrics now, or playing rockabilly. Now, this hollow body right here, well, it's not exactly a hollow body. This is what us guitar players and what they're what these guitars are really called are semi hollows. You know, they have like a block have like the block right here kind of up to the bridge and then of course they have like a couple of hollow hollow points so it's kind of like it's like a hybrid between a solid body and a hollow body guitar great guitars you know great for rockabilly too but you know if you're really going to go for that really nice rockabilly bright tone or that deep tone that you hear like from like Brian Setzer Chet Atkins you know all your typical rockabilly guys you know a lot of them are using the like the really hollow bodies and now you may be asking, okay, what kind of hollow bodies would you recommend? Well, you know, I would say it's all about the branding, but sometimes the brands will have to do with, will have to be depending on the sound that you're looking for and also the price that you're looking at. Um, you know, the couple brands that are really good for, for the hollow bodies are, you know, the number one for, I say, in my opinion, you know, there could be, you know, there's other people's opinions out there. But you know when it comes to rockabilly through the hollow bodies, the number one uh, brand of guitar that I think sounds really great with rockabilly for hollow bodies in general are the Gretsch's. You know the Gretsch 6120s, and you will recognize this kind of guitar from like seeing pictures of like Brian Setzer, Chet Atkins. The list can go on and on. And you know these these guitars have extremely powerful sounds you know you're going to get like the wiggle stick or the bixby as as what they're called which is like it's a tremolo kind of, or i think it's tremolo it's either tremolo or vibrato so I'm, if anybody wants to leave me in the comments i'm i'm pretty sure it's tremolo but i may be wrong in this um yeah i'll edit that part out later so it's going to come with that so you're going to have really fun you know you're going to be playing like the like an open note and you know pushing that down and yeah you're gonna you're gonna get pretty good sounds with it so yeah you know you know Gretsch's are really good guitars you know the price can vary you know the 6120s they will probably cost like maybe a little over a thousand dollars um yes I know you know you know guitars are pretty expensive but you know if you can find a good guitar you know, at a very good price you know go go for it you know I've seen Gretsch's are similar to these 6120s I mean, are extremely similar, but they're kind of a little bit cheaper. Um, I forget what the actual, like, title or model they're called, but I've seen Gretsch's go down for, like, maybe 800 you know, to 500 or so. You know, again, you know, they're going to they're gonna be a little bit on the pricey side. They may break, break the bank a little bit, but, I mean, it's just, you know, this guitar, this guitar right here kind of costs about $900, but, you know, I say getting a good guitar for that kind of money, you know, something that you are going to cherish and play it, you know, it is a good investment. So I go recommend you doing that. Yeah. Anyway, what's another like hollow body brand that that you can use for playing guitar for for playing rockabilly on guitar? Another one is Gibsons. Now, again, Gibsons are going to be on a very much higher end of things. You know, a lot of Gibsons, you know, it could be any Gibson, you know, from like Les Pauls, 335s, um, and so on. You know, they they they're the they're on the higher end side. Um, you know, they can reach for over again two thousand dollars and up. You know, they're going to be very higher end. You know, if you guys are new to guitar, I would tend to stay away from the Gibsons, but you can always opt for a Epiphone, which Epiphone is owned by Gibson. Uh, you know, they're a little bit on the inexpensive side of things, but they do sound great. You know, this guitar I've had since high school and, you know, I would never replace this guitar with anything, but, you know, it does have like the similar qualities to the Gibsons and it has some different unique sounds, but it's also a cheaper guitar because, you know, it was manufactured outside of the country, it was manufactured like in China or whatever. But you know, Epiphones, they're really great guitars. You know, you can you can find similar hollow bodies like with Epiphone if you don't want to use if you don't want to pay that kind of money for Gibson, then yeah. Going back to the Gibsons, what kind of Gibsons are you looking at for, for Rockabilly? Well, for acoustics, 
you can always, or I'll, I'll get to acoustics later, uh, but for the hollow body sounds, you know, you can always go for like a, you know, like a 335 style, um, you know, the 125s or 175s, I mean, and you know, yeah, you know, they're good rockabilly guitars, but they're more for the blues, but if you're looking for a good rockabilly Gibson, you know, I go for like the one, the one, the ES 175s. You know, you can always look for the L 5s as well. Um, you know, there's always the 350s. You know, you see like Scotty guys like Scotty Moore. Um, you know, Bill Haley. You know, those guys used to play the Gibson ES 350s. And, you know, they're great guitars. You know, if you're if you're willing to like save up for those kind of guitars, be my guess. Uh, but if you're starting out, I just tend to stay away from them just because, you know, just like just those kind of guitar price ranges, you know, they're going to be a little bit discouraging. But that's why you can always opt for like a Epiphone or, you know, you know, you can always go for the Gretches because Gretches are a little bit cheaper than the Gibsons. And yeah. So yeah, Gibsons are great guitars. I'm not, I'm not hating on Gibson. I actually love Gibsons so too. Uh, so yeah. So I think that'd be good for like starter like hollow bodies you know you can always opt for like guild like a guild um you know you know d'angelicos they have pretty good guitars even though that i say d'angel the d'angelicos are usually for like you know for the jazz kind of stuff but yeah you know you can always opt for either the epiphones the gibsons and Gretches for <clears throat> for a hollow body sound and yeah now let's talk about solid body guitars now, what are great solid body guitars for rockabilly? Well, there's a lot of, I mean, there's so many solid body guitars out there. Um, you know, they can vary, you know, you could go from like the Fenders, Gibsons, Epiphones, even Gretches have great solid body guitars. But in my personal opinion, if you're really going for that rockabilly sound with a solid body, you know, I highly recommend getting like, maybe like a, like a really good Telecaster. You know the Fender Telecasters, and the, the Fender Telecasters is what started it all with, with the electric sound. You know, um, you know Leo Fender was a genius when it came to inventing those kind of guitars. And you know, artists that you can hear, like if you want to hear good Telecaster sounding, you know, great artists is like from Gene Vincent's uh, guitar player Cliff Gallup. You know that I mean Cliff Gallup, he's playing a Telecaster throughout like the entire like. You know, Gene Vincent's era or whatever. You know, when you listen to songs like Beep Bop Lula, Crazy Legs, you know, Race of the Devil, you know, the guitar that he's using, Cliff Gallup's using, is the Telecaster. So you can really opt for a really good Telecaster. And now, again, Fenders can be very expensive too. You know, they're like Gibsons, you know, they can reach from like 1000 to $2,000, you know, you know, in that kind of range if you really want to get a new Tele. But you know, there's always squires. You know, for a lot of you, a lot of you like guys who are like really want to get into guitar but are starting out, uh, I go for the squires because you know they're inexpensive and they have that they have the sim they have a similar sound to the Fenders. And you know, yes, squires do make pretty good Telecasters. So go go get yourself a squire Telecaster. You know, hook it up to your amp and have fun with it. And if you guys are are pretty experienced with guitars, go go get yourself a Telecaster. You know, Telecasters are great guitars. I think, in my personal opinion, I think they sound a little bit better than like than Stratocasters, but that's just me. And yeah. So yeah, Telecasters are really good for solid body guitars through rockabilly. Now another another great solid body guitars to go look at for rockabilly are the Fender Strats. You know, the Strats are you know. Are kind of like the upgraded of the of the Telecaster, you know. They have the they have like the double cutaway, uh, flowing bridge. You know, they they sound absolutely fantastic. You know, from like listening to like SR, like Steve Ray Vaughan, Jimi Hendrix, whatever. But you know, the t but Stratocasters were were used as rockabilly guitars back in the fifties. You know, you hear Buddy Holly use one. Uh, Richie Valens used to play. Like the tele or tele Fender, ugh. you know Richie Valens used to play uh, the 
the Stratocasters, you know. Um, there's a lot of there's a lot of great artists out there from the fifties that did use the Stratocasters. And, you know, they're they're you know, there's there there are other ways you can use you can use them instead of like using like a telecaster. And yes, Squire does make Fender Stratocasters as well. You know, you know why? Because Squire is owned by Fender, so you know, you can always offer yourself those. Um, yeah, you know, they're 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 good sounding guitars. You know, I have it. I have a Stratocaster, and you know you've seen, you guys probably have seen them on my videos, and yeah. And going back with the Telecaster, you know, you know, more other players, you know, who use Telecasters, you know, um, you know, Waylon Jennings used to play Tellies, uh, Luther Perkins, who was Johnny Cash's guitar player, you know, he used to play a lot of the Tellies, you know, yeah. So Tellies are great guitars too. And one other like solid body guitar that I think, in my personal opinion, is probably the most underrated like rockabilly guitar, is I think the Les Paul Gibsons. And everybody knows what the Les Pauls are. You know, you've seen pictures of like, you know, Jimmy Page, um, you know, the Keith Richards, George Harrison. You know, all these great players use have used like Les Pauls, and you know they're still using Les Pauls today. But I'm talking about like, the early Les Paul Gibsons. You know, you're talking about the 52 gold top. Um, or you can go for like the 58 or 57 uh, Les Paul Customs. You know, the stuff that, you know, that Les Paul himself actually customly invented. And, you know, you, you can see like guys like, you know, Carl Perkins, who is known as the king of rockabilly, you know. You know, you can see in so many other videos of him playing like a 52 gold top. And yes, I understand they are expensive. You know, they are some of the most expensive guitars out there. But, you know, those are just like, those are some of the guitars that kind of electric guitars that are part of the rockabilly and, you know, that are, that really changed the history of rock and roll as, as it is like, as like time has gone, gone by. And yeah, so a good Les Paul is really good. And, yeah. So I think that's, that's probably about it for electrics. Um, if anybody else want to leave some comments on some good electric guitars that are great for a rockabilly, uh, go leave it in the comments down below. Um, yeah. So next thing is, I was talking about like acoustics, you know, like the Epiphone acoustics or whatever, or Gibson acoustics. Now let's get into acoustics, shall we? I'm gonna switch out my guitar for my acoustic. Try and, try and be careful so I don't get seat like that. <laughs> I don't want to get my guitars all dinged up or dented or whatever. And, yeah. Um, so really good thing about acoustics. Oop, and I dropped my pick. <laughs> so when it comes to acoustics, you know, really good acoustics that you can find, like for rockabilly, is like you know you really want to. I I personally would find like something that has like that has a nice bright tone, you know. You know, that has bright tones, you know, great fretting, and yeah. Something that like, Elvis played or Johnny Cash played, you know. You could go for like the Martins, Epiphones, Gibsons. And what those, what are the models called, you know. For Gibsons, I go for like the J200s or J45s. You know, you see Elvis with the J200. It's like the big jumbo one with the design on there. And, and yes, I understand they're, they're Again, Gibsons are expensive guitars, but you don't you don't always have to go for Gibsons. You can always go for something cheaper, you know. Uh, Epiphone they have their version of you know of the Gibson J forty fives. You know, Epiphone does have their own like J two hundreds, and you can always offer those. And yeah, Let's see what's another kind of acoustic you can use. Oh, you can use Guilds. You know, Guilds have great acoustics. They have great jumbo guitars that have that nice bright tone. You know, you can play your A's. Well, this is an Epiphone, but still, you can go for your Guilds and see, you can get that nice bright tone with like the Epiphones and something that you would have heard like with Johnny Cash, Elvis, whatever. So yeah, you know, when it comes to acoustics, go for your brighter tones, you know, you can always go for Taylors, uh, you know, Taylors have pretty, have really good bright tone acoustics, uh, that's what they're really known for. Um, you know, there's always Martins, Gibsons, but again, those are like the higher end stuff. 
So don't be too shocked if they're like if they're out of your price range. But if you really want something like inexpensive, you know, you can always go for like a guild or you know epiphones, etc. You know, I kind of stay away from the Fender acoustics. You know, I mean, I'm not too I'm not a huge fan of the uh, Fender acoustics, but you know, that's just me. You know, if you want to go for acoustic Fender, go for it. But those are just some of the guitars I recommend using if you want to do like inexpensive and yeah. So, so enough said, we, we got through all the guitars. What's next? Well, let's talk about the amps. Well, a couple of amps I think are sound amazing with, with rockabilly art. You know, you have your Fender amps, you know, you got the Fender um, Blues reissue, Blues Deluxe amps, and you know, you got your, your Fender Tweed amps. And you know, that's what they were using back in the 50s. And you know, they absolutely sound fantastic when you plug in them. I don't personally own one, but I've played on several like vintage Fender amps um, back in the past, whatever, you know. Um, you know, they still make pretty good reissues of them. And yeah, you know, they're, they're just great sounding, uh, you know, they're great sounding amps. You know, they're, again, you know, they're a little bit of expensive, but you'll understand why once you plug a guitar, plug a really good uh, electric guitar in and yeah. Uh, but no, no, they're they're great. They're great amps to play on. Um, you know, all the legends have played Fenders. You know, you can you can see you can find pictures of them and videos and whatnot. And you know, they're they're very basic amps to use. So you know, you're not like messing around like all these different kind of effects on these amps. And yeah, you know, they're they're very they're very straightforward amps. You know, they're tube amps and yeah. And you know, you can always go for a Marshall. Um, you know, they weren't really using Marshall in the 50s, but, you know, you really want to, I would recommend going for, like, the Fender amps, and, yeah. And there's other amps, you know, like, the starter amps, you know, like, they have, like, they have the speaker and the big circle, and, yeah, you, you know what, you know what I'm talking about, and, yeah. Let's see, we got through the amps. Now, let's go through pedals. Now, pedals can be, you know, pedals can be very funny. You, you, you know, you can use them, or you can, you, you can't use, or you don't have to use them. Um... Personally, I I used to have a pedal set, you know, a multi pedals set, but it kind of broke, so I'm trying to save up for more pedals, you know, trying to save up for other pedals, and yeah. So the kind of pedals that you could really use for rockabilly playing are, you know, you could go for your delay pedals, um, you know, you know, you could use. I recommend using like a good delay pedal, you know, that has that nice kickback, slapback kind of sounding, you know, you kind of. You know, like that kind of style that you hear from Brian Setzer, you know, he's using a hell of a lot of like delay on there and yeah. So you can go for a delay pedal and the kind of the BPM that you really want to look for is like with 130 or like a 90 a 90 BMP, which means uh beat per per measure and yeah. So a good good delay pedal. Um, if you're playing by yourself and you know you really want to record stuff like through videos. Get yourself a good loop pedal. Uh, I'm definitely saving up for one. You know, you can always use a really good overdrive pedal. You know, overdrive just gives you that a little bit of a grittier but really cool rock and roll and rockabilly sound. And yeah. Um, you can you can sometimes go for you can offer a fuzz box, but you know, I wouldn't use it if you're going for rockabilly. You know, that's up to you guys. Uh, but yeah, you know, those are the kinds of pedals you really want to look for. You know, if you want to get a wah pedal in, yeah. But the really main pedals that you really want to look for into Rockabilly are, is your, um, you know, something with, with delay and overdrive and, yeah. So this is kind of concludes a video of, you know, like different tips and tips on like how to have that Rockabilly sound and, yeah. So I hope everybody enjoys this video. Oh, the, the badass guitar, yeah, the badass guitar riffs throughout history video. That's gonna come out pretty soon. I just have to start filming it. I got the set list all set up. Um, I got all the all the like outfits that I'm gonna be wearing for that video. That's all gonna be set up. So yeah. So hopefully I'm gonna start filming by tomorrow or you know hopefully by this week. I really want to start filming them. Uh, hopefully I I really want to get this done by next week. By my birthday or so and yeah so keep an eye out for the for that video 
So yeah. So if you if you don't know, uh, once you like, subscribe, and comment my channel, share this video. Uh, keep on playing guitar, uh, and always be positive, stay faithful, and keep on rocking. And yeah, and I'll see you on the next video. Bye.